Have you ever felt overwhelmed by all the spline notes in Comfy UI or downloaded a workflow only to realize you are more lost than ever? So in this video, I'll show you how these connections work, making even the most complex workflows surprisingly simple. After updating Comfy UI, I realized the new interface has the Q prompt button below. So I'm going to move this up here and I'll be using Flux. So let's build a simple workflow so you can follow along. Right click, add node, I'll go to Lotus and select the load checkpoint node. Secondly, right click, add node, conditioning, I'll come all the way down to click text and code prompt. I'll change the color here as usual to green. Holding Alt, I'll click and drag this down to make a duplicate. Then change the color here to red. Let's add the next node. So we go under sampling, we find the K sampler. We need an image size for the generation. So right click once again, add node up to the latent, then select empty latent image. So using the splines can sometimes make the canvas look messy and overwhelming if you have a complex workflow. So to solve this, first of all, we go to the manager, go to the custom nodes manager, and then we search for the node here, which is used everywhere. The node will show up here, then install it if you don't already have it. I'll come down here to close, make sure to update all your custom nodes, close again, and refresh Comfy UI. I'll go ahead to right click to add a node. You'll find the extension down here as everywhere. Then select the third node, anything everywhere three. Zooming into the node gives us three default inputs. As you guys can see, going back usually, this is how we will connect the nodes by dragging out the spline to build a workflow. So we can avoid this and the splines by using the anything everywhere node. I'll drag the model into the first input. We can witness the name changes to model and we can see a glow in the K sampler, which means this is connected. Next, I'll drag the clip into the second input as well. We can see the name changes to clip, and this is connected by seeing the yellow glow in the positive and the negative prompt. So let's connect with the VAE as well. I'll go ahead to add a VAE decode node. Then as we can see with the glow here, we have a setup connection with the checkpoint node. I'll drag this all the way to the correct position in the workflow. Next, let's go ahead to connect the prompt nodes that go into the case sampler. Since we are using Flux, I'll search for the Flux Guidance node. Usually, this is how we connect the Flux Guidance node into the case sampler. So let's try to avoid this by using the Everywhere nodes instead of the splines. Right click, Add node, we go to Everywhere, then I'll select the Prompt Everywhere node. To connect this, the positive prompt goes into the plus VE input. We can see the connection glow in the case sampler once this is connected. Link the negative as well into the negative VE input. Also, we notice the negative glow connection as well in the case sampler. However, looking at the flux guidance node, we don't see a glow yet before passing it to the case sampler. So this tells us this is not yet connected. So I'll go ahead to add another node, go to everywhere once again. Here, I'll select anything everywhere with a question mark. I'll disconnect the positive prompt, then I'll drag this into the node here. Next, I'll zoom in here, then update the input to conditioning and make sure you have the right spelling. So we can see the K sampler positive glow is off and we are directing the positive prompt node where to go next into the flux conditioning. I'll go ahead to move this to the side, then let's connect the flux guidance node to the K sampler. I'll right click to add a node. Let's go to everywhere, select the second option, link the flux guidance. Then we can see the setup glow connection in the K sampler. So I'll zoom out from here. Usually this will look like this with the connection and the splines, but we are still making use of the everywhere node. So I'll delete the splines. And since we have two inputs here, we need to tell the K sampler where to connect. So I'll duplicate the everywhere node from here. Remember with a question mark, bring this down, then drag the latent into the node. I'll change the input type in samples and make sure you have the right spelling. Now we can notice the glow connection, which means this is connected. Next, I'll right click to add a node, go to image, down to save image. I'll duplicate the everywhere node from here, then I'll join the VAE decode. So we can see there's a glow connection here automatically, which means this is connected. I'll zoom out from here and I see I forgot the empty latent image. So let's duplicate the node here once again down. The spline will usually go into the K sampler, but let's avoid the spline. So link it into the everywhere node. Then we can see the glow connection in the K sampler. 
So to view if everything is linked correctly so far with all our nodes, I'll go ahead to right click here, come down to select UE links. As we can see, this will show the hidden splines feeding into each other, uh, similar to how the nodes will be connected originally. So let's try out all the connections so far using the prompt to see the results. I'll go ahead to right click to hide this once again. I'll highlight all the nodes here, then place them into a group just to keep things tidy. Let's make sure we have the right settings. So I'll zoom into the checkpoint node. I'll click to choose from my list. I'll be using the Flux FP8 model down here. Next, I'll move to the positive node. I'll type in the positive prompt I want to see a digital fish with a chopper blade above a futuristic cyberpunk city. And I'm curious to see how this turns out. So I'll leave the negative prompt blank since we are using flux. And next to the image size, I'll use a landscape format. So the width will be 1344 and the height will be 768. I'll move to the K sampler group. For this, I'm going to use a random number here. I'll keep this at fixed and the CFG will be 1 since we are using the Flux FP8 model. I'll zoom out from here. Let's go up here on the canvas. Then I'll hit Q prompt to see our first image using the Everywhere node to see the results. We have our first image generation completed and this means all the nodes are properly connected using the Everywhere nodes as well as using Flask. So this is looking good so far, I like this, but let's see how to include a LoRa to spice up this image. So I'll get closer to the checkpoint group, I'll right click to add a node, go to loaders, then select LoRa loader model only. I'll move this to the top. Usually using the spline, this is how this will be connected. However, to avoid the splines which we have been doing so far, I'll add another node from the everywhere custom node. Then I'll link the LoRa into the node here. I'll move this closer and then place all the nodes into a group. And this is all we have to do to include the LoRa node. For the LoRa style, I'll choose the model here from Civit AI. But you guys can go ahead to use any LoRa you may prefer. I'll go up here to hit Q prompt. Let's see the results from the LoRa node plus the everywhere nodes to see our results. All right, so we can see this is more dynamic. I like this more just by going into add the LoRa, we can see the additional details and this makes the image more interesting. Once you have this set up, I can zoom in here. If you have a different prompt, you can change the prompt, increase the steps a bit higher in the K sampler. Then you can go ahead to Q prompt again to see the varied results you may get. So try out with more ideas to see what you may come up with and the results and the outcomes you get. You can also go ahead to use the Flux Table LoRa to speed up your generations. And by using the Everywhere Custom node, you can easily move the groups to change the layout without even the splines coming in the way. And this makes the workflow more flexible. So speaking about groups, let's also simplify how we can activate or deactivate each of them. To do this, right click to add a node, select RG3, come down here, select Fast Group Bypasser. So I'll zoom in here into the node and we can see the group nodes in the workflow here will automatically be identified. And to bypass any group or deactivate any group in your workflow, first of all, let me zoom out from here. Next to the name, you change this to no. This will turn off all the nodes in the particular group you want to deactivate. Another feature we can also make use of is the arrow next to each group. And by clicking this, we can see the canvas will jump to the next group and frame the group selected from all the other groups. If you don't have the node here, which is RG3, go to the manager, click custom nodes manager. Into the search box type RG3, then install the custom node here. And you guys can see I already have mine installed. So close from here once this is done and following the same process, using the everywhere node, see if you can also include an upscale group in your workflow as I did here. These are a few tips I learned to improve my workflow. So I'm hoping this will be helpful to you guys as well and practice keeping a simplified and clean workflow. Don't forget to leave a like as always and check out this video next in case you missed it to create the simplest workflow using Flux. And I'll see you guys in the next video.